This is Nothing But That Sports Talk. Will you have the game? And welcome to Nothing But That Sports Talk and happy Women's History Month, Kimberly Becker. Thank you for stopping by. Hey, thank you so much for having me. No problem. And uh, yeah, before we get into any discussion about the sports events going on right now, let's just get to know your career. Let everybody know who you are and what you do. Absolutely. You got it. So right now I'm going to take these out because they're not, for some reason, they're not connecting. Um, right now I cover the NFL and some college football for Sports Illustrated. So I am a digital host and reporter at Sports Illustrated for their website. And I host videos for the Denver Broncos, Las Vegas Raiders, Indianapolis Colts. And then I write articles and I do videos um, covering USC football and USC basketball. Yeah, it's nice to see that you're a diehard football fan. You yes. Even some NFL teams that didn't make the playoffs last year, safely, or at least didn't go all that far where they did make it. But whatever, it would have been. It just would have been nice to get some playoff games during your time in Sports Illustrated. Just saying, but I'm sure you probably had that in previous jobs, so I'm not going to make too big of a deal about that. So, <laughs> what's it like working for Sports Illustrated as a host and reporter? Oh, I love it. You know, like you said, I'm a diehard, diehard football fan. I'm able to cover my favorite sport, talk about my favorite teams. I grew up in Denver, Colorado, so I'm actually a diehard Broncos fan, but it's been such a good experience to be able to cover the Denver Broncos and one of their biggest rivals in the Las Vegas Raiders. You know, I've learned so much about the Raiders and about that team and kind of their history and their background and the way that their schematics all work out and how the team, um, you know, shows up to play games where, when I grew up in Denver, all I wanted to do was root against the Raiders and, you know, I wanted them to lose, but now I just have such a, a different respect and awareness for, um, you know, the team just as a football team and the greatness of the sport in general. So I love being able to talk about the NFL. Um, I'm learning a ton about college football as well, being able to cover USC. I live in Orange County, so it's just up the road a little bit. So I was able to go to some of those home games, which was such a blessing this last year at the LA Memorial Coliseum and at the Rose Bowl. So yeah, I mean, like you said, it's, it's a dream just being able to talk about my favorite sport and, being able to do it with some really great people yeah it's amazing sports illustrated it's an amazing publication to be covering those teams like i mean before we get get more into that like why don't you talk about the road to get the job at sports illustrated Yes. Um, you know, everybody says this, I know it, but I got super lucky. I worked really hard, of course, and I reached out to so many people. I, I networked through quarantine and through COVID and all of that. And I just would cold email people, cold call people just asking for advice and, you know, different um, feedback on my reel and, you know, just some suggestions on how to navigate this crazy industry. But um, I was lucky enough to skate with Disney on ice for 10 years before I started this this next career of mine in sports journalism. So I had a lot of experience being in front of crowds, being in live entertainment. I was a live host for a little while with Disney. So I was on a microphone in stadiums, kind of like an in arena host, if you will, with Disney on ice. So um, I had a lot of PR experience and a lot of interviewing experience with that. And then I got my degree in broadcast journalism and I graduated in 2020 last May. Um, a lot older than most most kids um, because I did take 10 years off before I went to college, took a little, little bit of a different route, but um, I did graduate last year and with COVID happening, everyone, you know, was sitting at home and trying to figure out how they were ever going to get a job in sports during all of this craziness. And I just reached out to people and I networked like you're doing. And, you know, I just, I, I met some awesome people. I got some great feedback and um, I was able to meet someone who then sent my reel to someone who then sent my reel to sports illustrated and then sports illustrated contacted me. And they were like, you know, we really like what we see on video. Um, we'd love you to get some more experience and some more reps covering football. If that's what you want to do, would you be willing to help out with video content on our website? And I said, are you kidding me? Absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what I want to be doing. So um, it was luck. It was timing, but I did reach out to a bunch of people. I have a notebook full of names and numbers and advice and, you know, different tips and tricks. And um, yeah, it was just, it, it was a grind. I mean, I, right now I don't have a day off. I, I barely had a day off when I was trying to find a job, um, but I, it's worth it. Yeah, all you can do is just take your time to find the right people and the right ways to connect and you'll get into the job. And that's exactly what you did. Yeah. And to be fair, I was told the same thing when I interviewed somebody that works in Sports Illustrated during the National Association of Black Journalists Convention, the virtual version over the summer. So, uh, yeah, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. But 
how difficult was it to transition from being Disney on ice to the sportscaster? Oh my gosh. Um, that transition wasn't as hard as going from Disney on ice to college, to being a college student, you know, because when I was at Disney on ice, um, I skated for 10 years with them. I traveled all over the world. I've been to 45 countries. I've done thousands of performances. I want to say three to 4,000 performances somewhere in there. Um, and you know, the only real responsibility I had was to show up for the show and to do that. And Luckily I was, I loved ice skating. I was a competitive ice skater my whole life. So I trained for it. I loved performing. I loved being in front of an audience. So I, I was doing something that I loved with that. So then coming over to being a sportscaster, I also really love this. I love, again, you know, being in front of people, telling stories, talking about sports, being able to watch sports. It's just my favorite thing ever. So that transition wasn't, wasn't too difficult because I loved them both so much, but the, the hardest transition was going from Disney on ice to then being a college student and having to do homework again after 10 years and being in classes with kids that were 10 years younger than me and just kind of like learning how to adapt um, to this new lifestyle. So that was, that was the hardest part, especially because when I was with Disney, I was traveling nine months out of the year. I was in a different city every week. I was living out of a suitcase, two suitcases to be exact, 50 pounds each, not a pound over. Um, so that lifestyle change was probably the hardest, but the sports casting stuff, yeah, I mean, I love it. So I, I haven't ever really looked back. And I'm glad you never did. And hey, you've been able to do so much in just a long period of time. and. It just goes to show you're never too old to achieve your goals. Never. Thank you. No, I know people tell me that. And there was, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have my highs and my lows. You know, I have days where I'm like, what am I doing? I'm so much older than everybody. And I'm, I'm not anywhere where I want to be, you know, at 30 years old. But then I have other days where I'm like, wait a second, I've done, I've done two really great things. You know, I've been able to live my first dream out and I'm currently living my second. So I am very blessed. I'm very lucky. Um, but I, I've worked very hard to get here. And so, yeah, I'm grateful for it all. Yeah. Do you ever spend this time wishing that you were still on Disney on ice or did you love being in the sportscaster field covering the teams you just said? No, um, to answer your first question. No, there's never a day where I'm like, Oh, I still wish I was. And that's probably because I stayed, as long as I possibly could. You know, I did it for 10 years. When I first started with Disney on Ice, I thought I was only going to do it for one year. And then I was going to go to college. And that obviously happened, you know, went to two, went to three, went to five, went to seven, blah, 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 went to 10 years. So my ninth and 10th years, I was getting pretty tired of it. You know, I still loved performing and I loved the traveling, but my body was starting to hurt and the lifestyle was really hard. And I was sick of eating out every, every meal. I was sick of living in a hotel, you know? Um, so I, I definitely ran that course as absolutely to the end of its of its string there. Um, and now, of course, I miss the people. You know, the people are always the best thing, I think, that comes out of these types of careers, especially in the entertainment and in the sports world. Um, the people and the relationships that you that you make. But I, I don't miss. No, I don't miss living that lifestyle anymore. And um, yeah, like you just said, now I'm covering stuff that feels more um you know like on a, on a bigger scale because everybody knows sports everybody not everybody but you know most people know sports everybody in our industry knows sports they know these teams they know these um you know these leagues and such and where i'd be on disney on ice and i remember i was in helsinki one year and the super bowl was at like 1 30 a.m that's what time it was starting in helsinki you know and i was like okay who's coming who's coming to my room to watch the super bowl and everybody looked at me and they're like, the what? And I was like, oh my gosh. So now I'm, I'm grateful to be around people that are, are, are like-minded as me when it comes to sports and football. Yeah. Then that's exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, I know that's, like I said earlier, last season when you covered the, those three NFL teams, yeah. you, well, most of them didn't make the playoffs or no the Bron yeah i was just covering the broncos and the uh broncos and the raiders during the 2020 season i just recently started with the colts but um yeah i was just covering the broncos and the raiders and no they the broncos i don't even want to get into it they had a rough season um but yeah they were nowhere near the playoffs and then the raiders they started out really well halfway through the season they were six and three and then literally from there i just went downhill and their playoff contention yeah, I went right out the window, but um, yeah, so a bummer for both teams. I know the Raiders probably need to make it to the playoffs next year if they want to want to get their reputation back to where it was years ago. It's been a while for the Raiders, but um, especially with John Gruden being there, I think it's kind of playoffs or bust next year for them. 
the Broncos, we'll see, you know, we will see how they rebuild their team coming into free agency and coming into the draft. They definitely have a lot of holes to fill. They've got to figure out their quarterback situation with Drew Locke, but um, yeah, it would be so much fun to be able to cover those teams if they make it to the playoffs. But at the same time, I'm, I'm grateful to be able to cover them at all. So I, I still had a great time, especially during the crazy COVID years, the crazy COVID, well, I shouldn't say years, the crazy COVID months um, that NFL was happening. I'm, I'm still very grateful for what I was able to do. Hey, that, that, that's really so much to digest. Yeah. But you know what? Last season, both of the NFL teams did not have fans in the stands. Like, yeah. what's it like watching these NFL games, whether as a fan or a journalist, knowing that they were in empty arenas or empty stadiums? Yeah. I mean, the NFL ones were crazy. I was never in, I never went to any of the NFL games in person um, because their, you know, their rules were, we're pretty, pretty tight. I also, I live in California at the moment. So um, I am not in Vegas or Denver, obviously couldn't go to any of those games, but I, I am covering USC. So I was able to go to the USC games and there was nobody, no fans in those stadiums. And that was so strange. You know, I was up in the press box and you could hear, you could literally hear what the coach was saying on the opposite sideline of the field. And, you know, I'm up there in the press box, like way, way, way up. And it was just crazy, you know, and then scores would happen. There'd be no cheering. I mean, you definitely lose that, that huge layer that makes these, these games so fun to be around and so fun to watch. And obviously we were just so happy that these kids were still able to play the games. And that, I mean, obviously that I was able to even go in person and watch it in the press box, but yeah, not having fans was a huge element that was very, very clearly missing. Yeah, me and my cousin, who I've had as my, my guest of my show like a thousand times, yeah. he always talked about how he hated watching these NFL games and football games in general with no fans in stands because it's the tradition. I was like, my guy, yeah. it's still enjoyable to watch. You can still get some enjoyment for watching these games. And I know you had a lot of enjoyment based on what you said earlier in the discussion. Definitely. No, I mean, I absolutely still enjoyed it. And it was so, like I said, so much fun just to be able to have these guys play after everything that had happened, especially in the Pac-12 and everything, um, you know, the USC Trojans being able to play. But it was a little bit different, I think, for people watching it on TV, because they would input that crowd noise, you know, and they overlaid the sound. So when you're watching it on TV, it feels like there's fans there. But being in person, no, it was very, very evident that there were no fans. But still, like you said, just I was so happy that we even had football to begin with after everything that happened last year with baseball and with basketball and hockey. So, I mean, we were lucky that the NFL season made it to the Super Bowl, honestly. Yeah, and, and when you made it to the Super Bowl, there were fans in the stands. You got to see Tom Brady pull off another iconic Super Bowl championship run. And yeah, I know being a fan of those teams you just said, watching Tom Brady get as far as he did, getting those championships was no walk in the park. And I'm gonna tell and I'm gonna tell you like what like my guy Ryan Walker, who's also been a special guest on my show a thousand times, always said. Yeah. Tom Brady's championship win. I don't want to hear any of the quarterbacks of the teams you just said. I don't want to hear Eli Manning. Actually, you can say Eli Manning because he beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl twice. But I, but I do not want to hear any quarterback. I don't even want to hear Kimberly Becker. Okay. <laughs> no, honestly, I have so much respect for Tom Brady. And being a Broncos fan growing up, that pains my insides to say it out loud. But what he did last year was absolutely incredible. I don't think that anybody can argue and say that he is not the GOAT. I mean, to change conferences, to leave the dynasty that you created with a team that you created and with a coach that just felt like the perfect fit to go to this team that really hadn't had a losing season in, I think, 10 years or something like that. I mean, it was like a decade of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers not having a winning season. So that was absolutely incredible. And then to be able to play in his home stadium for the Super Bowl for the first time in league history. I mean, the dude moves mountains. He's insane. I loved seeing him drunk on the boat. Also during the parade, it made us all realize how human he is and that he can still have a good time. But no, as, oh my gosh, he's, he's incredible. He's another, another species, honestly. Exactly. And later championships after the losses to Eli Manning's Giants made me respect Tom Brady a lot more. Yes, 1000%. I agree. 
Okay, now let's address the elephant in the room as a year ago, since we talked about what happened with sports during COVID. A year ago this week, we had literally no sports. Every game was getting shut down, and there was literally nothing going on. Talk about what's it like living through all that and graduating through all that struggle. Yeah, well, thank you for asking. I mean, you know, for me, I, I felt more for the the younger ones that were still graduating college just because I had had such a great experience with Disney on Ice for 10 years after high school. You know, I kind of lived my college years through Disney on Ice and, you know, was able to get all that social aspect of college out while I was touring and while I was with my friends at Disney on Ice. So when I was in school, when I went back to school or to school, I guess, to college, um, you know, I, I didn't have aspirations to, you know, like find this whole social life there. I just wanted to get my degree and get out of there. And so obviously it was still really hard. I've, I didn't have a graduation ceremony, which I wish I would have had, but, and I wasn't able to finish a lot of my classes, um, in person, obviously like everybody else, but I really feel for the younger kids who didn't get to experience their senior year fully with all of their friends, you know, and have that graduation party and ceremony and all of that. So I feel more for everybody else just because I, I think I, you know, I was lucky enough to be able to have the experiences that I did with Disney on ice. And so I think I, that kind of, you know, filled the whole college space for me, but the hardest part was obviously graduating and then knowing that there were no jobs in sports, you know, and, and during COVID and I was like, Oh my gosh, are they just going to completely rid of all of these opportunities? Are they ever going to come back? When are they going to come back? So it was really hard for a long time. But um, again, I just kept trying to network and meet people and make relationships and hopes that they would remember me or that they would keep me in mind if anything were to come up. And again, I just got really lucky, but no, it was not fun. And again, I've had my bad days and my good days like everybody else. I don't think that anybody is really great every single day. I think we're still going through it, you know, and it's it's a it's a mental process as well. It's tough. Yeah, it really was. And during the whole quarantine, all I could do is just this content that I interview you in. Yeah. That's all I could do. And I know for somebody that waited a long time to get into college, let alone not going to graduate, didn't even get a chance to put on the cap and gown in a ceremony, no disrespect. It was really difficult. And I feel like for my ultimatas, like I'm an ultimata from LIU Brooklyn and Fordham, and I had to watch all these kids do virtual ceremonies instead of putting on the cap and gown and crossing the stage at the Barclays Center in LIU or crossing the stage at the Fordham campus itself. Having to watch all that is just difficult to watch. Like, how you how can you enjoy being do, how can you enjoy living through COVID? Oh, I know, covering sports virtually, putting together small panels, networking, yeah. watching WWE. But then again, I don't you know I don't think you watch it anyway. But all I gotta say is it's a difficult struggle, and I'm glad you overcome it to get to where you are right now in Sports Illustrated, Kimberly. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. This week coming up, we have Selection Sunday, and I saw you were covering USC and UCLA late game during the Pac-12. Yes. Tournament. Get ready for the return of March Madness. How excited are you for March Madness coming back after a two-year hiatus? My gosh, you know, it's so funny. I remember that March Madness, when March Madness got canceled last year, that was like the first really big blow to the sports world. You know, I remember hearing that it was canceled and I was like, no, if they cancel March Madness, I mean, that's, that's it, right? Like they're going to cancel everything. So it's such this, uh, this like staple event, especially in sports and obviously in all college sports. I mean, people go crazy over March Madness. The entire month is just insane. It's so much fun to watch, but um, yeah, so it, it has this kind of this looming like oh my gosh this is exactly when everything really hit the fan last year so really excited that it's happening obviously I I wish it was normal and you know back to what it used to be in Vegas and everything but that's okay it's still happening in Indiana and so that's great um and fans right they get to have fans at 25 percent capacity for March Madness which is awesome um but yeah USC they had really good year actually they I mean like you just said they beat UCLA in that last second shot. I mean, that was 
insane. They were down the entire game. UCLA clearly was the stronger team that night and UCLA was at home. And I really did not think that USC would come out and, and take the W, but really fun to watch. They've been a great team. Um, Andy Enfield just won an award as well. So the head coach of USC, the men's basketball team. Um, so yeah, they had an awesome year. And I think that they're, they do have a shot at March Madness. Obviously they're not, you know, one of the biggest teams um, when it comes to college basketball, they're not one of those blue blood programs, but I think that they're going to have a good time. And I think that, you know, they're still, um, they've got the tallest team in the country. Did you know that all of their guys, I mean, they are huge. Evan Mobley is a star and he's a freshman. So I think they're going to have a really good time. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, you can't discredit UCLA because they've had moments in March Madness for when they made it to the Final Four back-to-back years in the late 2000s to some of the upsets they've had in the 90s. I mean, come on, man. And, and not to mention, Russell Westbrook led UCLA to a crazy finish in one of the early March Madness round games in 2008, I believe. Yeah, it was 2008. I remember Russell Westbrook killed it at UCLA back in the day. Oh, yeah. No, UCLA used to have an amazing basketball program, and they're definitely getting back there. You know, it's it's been a crazy year, I think, for well, crazy few years for Pac-12 football, basketball, I mean, all across the board. But no, UCLA was a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. Back then. Yeah. Oh, and there's also USC when they, when they were led by D'Angelo Russell. And there was also and there was also the year where they took out Kevin Durant's Texas Longhorns in 2007. They like literally blew him out in the round of 32. I know a lot of people have to remember that. I mean, but then again, it's probably forgettable up until this point because you see the type of career Kevin Durant's had up until this point come to the yeah. Brooklyn Nets. But um, yeah, how far do you see these teams going if they get selected to the March Madness tournament? Oh, you know, it's hard to say. I really didn't follow many of the other teams besides USC, so I don't know much about UCLA. Um, I just cover USC for Sports Illustrated, so um can't really can't really talk on UCLA but USC like I said they've had a surprisingly good year I think they're in a good place um you know being at the top of the Pac-12 conference as well I think that they've they've got a they've got a shot to go I don't think they're going to make it into you know the final four or anything like that but I think that they'll they'll be able to play a couple games and I think they'll they'll be able to definitely get a taste of what it's like to to have that competition I'm excited to watch them yeah, and this year almost anybody can make it to the March Madness tournament. And anybody can win it. Yeah. I mean, you got Villanova, you had Creighton, and oh yeah, Duke is kind of decent, but they at least they have a chance to make it to the tournament. But That's let's be honest, I don't see Duke or North Carolina making it to the tournament this year. I can't believe I'm actually saying that because you've always seen at least one of those teams oh. make it a deep run in the tournament. No, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean it's it's going to be crazy not to hear those those names there but um I don't know I mean it's hard to say it's hard to say and like I said I haven't followed a ton of the the other teams so I don't I can't really speak to many many other teams other than USC but I'm still really excited to watch and hello March Madness like everybody looks forward to March because of college basketball so it's it's just I can't believe we're already almost halfway through March but it's exciting that it's here and we'll be able to watch it yeah this is gonna be insane oh yeah the second half of the NBA season is coming up and I don't know how much of the NBA that you follow, but what are your impressions on it? Oh yeah, you admit you just don't follow it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I just haven't had a lot of time to follow the NBA right now. I'm trying to follow hockey a little bit because I'm a I'm a bigger hockey fan um, than NBA. But yeah, I just haven't I haven't had time. I've been been busy with the off season stuff with the NFL, busy with um, college basketball. So yeah, I just unfortunately I have not followed the NBA much. But tell me what's going on. Fill me in. Uh, all I can tell you is Team LeBron spoke Team Durant in the All-Star <laughs> game. Shocking. Yeah. The Brooklyn Nets picked up Big Griffin. A few months ago, or should I say a month ago, they picked up James Harden. Yeah. They're the second best team in the Eastern Conference by only the Philadelphia 76ers. LeBron's Lakers, they're in the top three, but they may not make it to the top because the Utah Jazz have the best record. I and did Joel see the Jazz were up there. That's awesome. And Joel B is a leading candidate for the NBA MVP. Nice. Yeah. He, the, guy was literally, about. the guy who's literally a center is going to be an MVP. He, he, he worked for the ground up. This is a whole growth Philadelphia 76ers team. If you follow the NBA, you know what I'm talking about. But sadly, I'm going to have to talk about that in another episode. because <laughs> yeah. nope. Save that for your next guest. <laughs> Yeah. But well, okay, to wrap up this episode, we are in Women's History Month. How is it? What do you, what do you 
think about Women's History Month and how important is it to the culture of sports, music, entertainment, and pretty much everything around the world? I mean, it's obviously a wonderful month and, you know, being a woman, like being able to have these types of conversations and having you recognize it and ask me is such a great thing. But honestly, like down the line, I hope that this whole woman in sports thing isn't like the biggest thing, because I think that we're almost like highlighting that there is a difference between women and men when we talk about women in sports. And, you know, when people say, oh, she's the first woman to do this, she's the first woman to do that. It's so great for females. And I think this is what we need right now to get it started. But I hope down the line, we don't even need to have the conversation because I hope that more and more just keep coming and it just becomes the norm and we don't even need to highlight it, you know? So this is a great start. I'm excited that, um, you know, all this women in sports awareness is happening and that they're talking about, you know, the wage gap, obviously that needs to be crushed and there needs to be equality across the board when it comes to that. But I hope one day down the line, we, we don't even have to talk about it. And it, it's just normal to have every woman be where they deserve to be. I mean, why not? I mean, like, women in sports is important. When I watch all these notes you just said, all you can think about is the fact that there are women that are relevant to the sports industry rather than an athlete or a journalist or anywhere in between. I mean, oh yeah, well that's that's what I mean. You know, there's there's been women in sports for for decades, the, for the entire history of sports. There's been women here, and so I think people just need to realize that like we do belong here. We are we we are here. People women have belonged here forever. And I think it's just been kind of a male dominant voice um, when it comes to sports media and sports in general. But I I think again, down the line, I mean, I just hope that there's not a huge separation between it and people just realize like, it's just normal. We don't have to talk about it. <laughs> That's down the line. That's not right now, it's down the line. I mean, it will be down the line. I mean, I mean, okay. When the WNBA, the WNBA barely has any media platforms covering their leagues mm -hmm. in the past few years. Up until just a few years ago, I've interviewed some people that covered the WNBA for their own platform, whether it's something from the ground up or a magazine that barely get as much recognition as I normally does before women got involved with it. But yeah, it's just women in sports is very important. And it's important to talk about it during Black History Month, which was last month, and Women's History Month, which is right now. Yeah. And even though as a man, oh, it kind of affects you know, people like me get a job in sports journalism, which is shouldn't. I have to accept the fact that women do belong in the sports industry, especially the WNBA, especially on Disney on Ice, if you count ice skating as a sport, that is. Oh my but, gosh, you uh, better count ice skating as a sport. Whoa. Yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and, and you're literally a, another example that you don't necessarily need to be an athlete just to do sports journalism again, unless you count ice skating as a sport. But you do. Um, so. If you want to say I'm not an athlete, then we've, we're going to have a whole nother conversation. I spent my entire life training as a figure skater. I did two a days. I skated before school, then I went to school, and then I went back and I skated after school. So it is 1000% a sport. I will definitely defend that one as long as I need to. So yes, I am an athlete and I was a professional athlete at that. So I absolutely absolutely belong in this industry yes and i respect that 100 i mean you got ice skating in the olympics so yeah and it's hard have you ever been, have you ever gone ice skating yeah i i mean i try to avoid ice skating because it's just not hard <laughs> it's just not for me so, that, that's all you need to know let's just say it's not for me but you I have to have a very a very um i mean you have to be athletic to be an ice skater and you've got to have it's a very hard sport. It is definitely a sport and it's one you have to train for. So yes, it's, and it's like you said, it's in the Olympics. It's, I don't think there's ever an argument. I mean, if it's, it's, in, I mean, if it's in the Olympics, then it counts as a sport. That's all yeah, that's we're going to say about that. No. <laughs> and I'll conclude this episode, nothing but that sports talk. Thank you for stopping by Kimberly Becker. I really appreciate you being on the show and letting me know that ice skating counts as a sport. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. And breaking down the struggles of what it's like to go from one field to another. Definitely. Yes. I hope, I hope that someone got something out of it and that people just know that you can do whatever you put your mind to. Just make sure you're putting in the work. Exactly. And for all the balls out there and certain ice skaters in the podcast, get your head in the game. Yes. <laughs>